says that Lord God, see how I am wrong and judge my judge my case. Come on now. That means that you're asking the Lord God to take over the whole matter. Yeah, that's a little nugget there. I, whenever I get, I try to write it down and mention it because that's a blessing right there in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank the Lord God. How is the temperature, everyone? Are we okay? Amen. God, I'm going to ask permission if it's okay for me to remove my mask and bring the word in the name of Jesus. I love them to see the, seeing the baby, seeing the children in the house. I love that. That's such a blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to the day when my little one is going to be okay. And my little grandbaby is going to be okay. Coming, they're coming. Yes, I did a, you think he on the altar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're pulling off their net with them. Uh, they're twins, by the way. They're twins. I have some twins, too. Amen. Uh, the, are we ready? You ready, Lord God? You ready? You're okay? Are you okay? We really care. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Fathers, we come right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. We come to say thank you. Thank you for another day, another opportunity to be in the land of the living one more time. As we come to feast and to dine upon your word, I'm asking Holy Spirit for your direction, for your leading, for your guidance in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that we have a teachable spirit to pick up everything that you're trying to show us and teach us tonight. And we said amen. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Tonight, as we're in Psalms 84, I'm going to be beginning my reading at verse number 3. Amen? The word of the Lord God said, I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, even the sparrow has found a home, and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord, of hosts, may the King of my God Blessed are those who dwell in the house, and they will still be praising you. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his almighty word. And we said amen. 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 amen and amen. That's another place to just give God glory. Because it's a the word that we spoke about before, about being blessed. If you didn't get the message, I've encouraged you. Remember that when you're blessed, it means that God favors you. Come on now. It's more than just God bless you. It means that God has actually placed a favor upon you whenever you hear the word blessed. Tonight, the word that God has given me tonight for us to study is altar. <laughs> altar. That's A-L-T-A-R. Altar. Which is something, and I'm going to define it for you. As the babies have already defined it, uh, people of God, those who are just joining and just those who are just watching, there were some children, some blessed little man that just came and blessed the altar doing praise and worship. And it's all about what God wants to do today. He says the altar. An altar is a raised area in a house. Come on. In a house of worship. Let me put it that way. This is the Webster's definition. An altar is a raised area in a house for worship, for people to honor God. Now let me give you the biblical definition of an altar. It is a, an altar is a place of sacrifice, a place of offering, a place of remembrance, and a place of power. Come on now, I'm going to repeat that. An altar, the biblical definition, it is a place of sacrifice, a place of offering, a place of sacrifice, and a place of power. I'm saying that because nowadays, and now that we're doing a study about altar, in New Testament, we don't hear a lot about altars. But in the Old Testament, it's very prominent for you to hear about an altar. Amen? For you to hear about people building an altar. We hear in Old Testament that Noah built an altar. Whenever he came out of it and came through the flood, he built an altar. Abraham built an altar to celebrate whenever in Genesis chapter number 12. But I'm saying about an altar is that the Lord God is calling for us to build an altar. And you're like, what? Well, what the altar that God is talking about? It is a place for you to bring it all and lay it at the altar. Come on. Building an altar means that you come with your whole heart. That's what an altar really is. We're talking about not just a physical altar, but a spiritual altar. And that's why I'm so glad that we're in this house and we 
we have an altar. And the Lord God say, I'm calling for people to come to the altar. Amen. I'm calling for the people of God to be the people of God again and come to the altar. There's too many stages and not enough altars. Amen. Come on now. There are too many places where people want to be examined and be seen. But God says, I'm opening up the altars. I want the altars of your heart to be made. That's where you come and you say, Lord God, I got some issues that I need to take care of. And you know what he tells you? Leave it at the altar. I got a problem in my home. I need something to be done. Lay it at the altar. Some things are not going the way that I want them to go. He said, I need for you to lay them at the altar. Did you hear what the Lord God said? An altar is a place where there's power at the altar. Amen. You don't get anything else tonight. Remember that your altar is powerful. Remember, whenever you go in prayer, oh yeah, we're going to get into that, the Holy Spirit allowed, about building an altar in your own home. You see, most people think that's strength, but you can build an altar in your home. Yes, you can. It's a place that you go and you walk in and you pray and you consecrate and you set aside. Don't let anybody sit there. Don't let anybody operate there. It's a place where you meet God. Come on now. I, I, it's really simple. I don't know about you, but I've actually at times took a chair. I prayed in the area and I put the chair in the corner. And all of a sudden, the Lord God, I love veils and I love prayer shawls. And I lay my prayer shawl on it. And whenever I want to pray, I get to my altar. Come on, I get there and I bow down and I begin. I'm a kneeler and I'm a lay down. Everybody has a different way before you go before the Lord. Some people sit, some people lay, some people bow. I'm a, I'm a bow downer and I'm a kneeler. And whenever I have an issue, I go to my altar. I'm preaching already. Amen. When you have an issue, you go to your altar. Yeah, that's where you need to go. You don't go to your friend. You don't go to your prayer warrior. You go to the altar first. You bring what God has given you or what you're dealing with. You say, Father God, I'm bringing it to my altar. Do you realize when I have that altar built, let's say if I built this as an altar, whenever I walk there, I, sometimes I put my Bible there. Do you realize the altar is so powerful that when you begin to pray there, when you walk by it, it almost calls you. Amen. You ever felt that? That means if you have a real prayer altar, because do you realize some prayer altars you get your healings at, you get your deliverance at, you get your freedom at, you get your breakthrough at. Amen. So whenever you begin to walk by your altar that you have built in your own home, it has a tendency to call you. You're having a bad day, go to your altar. Mm -hmm. Somebody, something's going wrong, go to your altar. It actually is a way, it brings me back to God because it's a way that I know that there's power at the altar. Tell your neighbor, there's power at the altar. I don't think I told you the title of today's message. The title is Bow Down. You're going to have to learn how to bow down. You're going to have to learn how to get to your prayer altar and learn how to bow down. I know that this is not going to be a glorious message because not many people want to come to an altar. Because when you come to an altar, that means you've got some issues. And see, nobody wants to know about, wants you to understand or, or know that you want to go through an, an issue or a problem in your life. But God says, if you have an issue, bring it to the altar. You know, sinners come to the altar. Amen. People who need to be saved come to the altar. People who need healing come to it. You got, a, you got an addiction you need to get rid of? Come to the altar. You see, I, I want you to know this whole message is really about a bowing down, about an altar call. The Lord God said, I'm calling for the altars to open up. I'm calling for individuals to put down shame, pride, and guilt and come to the altar. I'm just, the Lord God said, it's no more keeping things concealed. Whenever you come to your daddy's house, you should be able to lay it at the altar. Amen. And see, that's the same thing whenever you're going home. When you're at home, because you're like, well, I can't make it to my altar. I don't know, on Monday afternoons, you may not can make it to the church altar, but I guarantee you can make it to the altar at your house. Amen. I don't know about you, but you see, sometimes, see, Wednesdays and Saturdays is good, but I got to go through Mondays, and I got to make it through Tuesdays. And you don't know about my Thursday. Let alone that Friday hit. And lo and behold, Sunday does show up. Amen. But I want you to understand that at that time I can't make it to the church house. But the Lord God said, you can go to your altar because there is power at the altar. Amen. The place, whenever you can find yourself in at the altar that you've erected in your home, do you realize strength comes to you that you did not have? Come on up. Revelation and clarity. See, some of you, you really, this message is so powerful. I believe the Lord God said, if you understand your altar, you'll begin to get revelation, clarity, and the Lord God said, even restore your dreams at the altar. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, when you're at the altar, all of a sudden God gives you.
you revelation. Mm -hmm. He gives you clarity. Some things that were laying dormant begin to stir up because all of a sudden you're at this, you're at the altar. You're at a place of power. Do you realize, do you remember when Jacob wrestled with the angel? Come on, do you realize after he did that, he built an altar? Right there, he called the place called Bethel. Come on now, he, there's a place called Bethel. There's a song that's talking about the, the place of worship. It's called Bethel. An altar is a place where you can lay everything there, people of God. And in the Psalms, Psalms 84, it says, Even your altars, O Lord of hosts. And see, look at verse 3. It says, Even the sparrow has a found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord. Mikey, what, what that passage is trying to tell you is that every place, see, if a sparrow can find a home, if a swallow can find a nest, then I guess that even your altars, oh Lord God, he's trying to tell you, make your altar your home. Make it the place where you get to when you can't get anywhere else. Get to your altar. Tell your neighbor, bow down. Tell your neighbor on the side, bow down. You must understand that God is calling for us to get to our spiritual altars. He's calling for the church to be the church again. Amen. He's calling for the altar to become the altar again. You see, that's where whenever you have something that's going on, and I'm going to repeat that, thank you, Lord, you should come to the altar. You know, it's one thing when people are running. It's a sad day when people run from the altar. Come on now. You see, you may, you see, because you, every time that you come into the house of the Lord God, if you have something going on, you should not ever miss the altar call. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, some people say, well, don't take it. Well, maybe don't take that for you. <laughs> I, if, yeah, I tell you what, if I was on the other end, every time that they probably would have to get me, and when's she going to leave? <laughs> when she gonna leave? Because I need the Lord God so much, and I don't know about you, but I, I can tell whenever I go before the Lord. When I'm at the altar, I get some things that I don't get unless I go to the altar. Amen. Woo. See right. things that I was unsure about. I don't know whether I get confirmation, I get revelation, I get clarity. I'm like all oh, at the altar. See that's why the devil doesn't want you to come to your altar. All right. Because at times, whenever you come, you're like, well, I'm not really going through that. Make it to the altar. Because the Lord God, he said, I got something for you. Isn't that just like God? He said, when you make it to the altar, I got something I've been wanting to tell you about. Mm. Wow, come on. Make it to your altar. Oh, God is quiet in the house, but you must understand. Like the baby was doing. He said, come like the little children. That's why the baby could have preached the message. Because without any reservation, the baby came to the altar. He came to the altar. Nobody before he was so free to come to the altar. I'm saying that because in this day and age, we have a lot of adults and no disrespect, but they're running from the altar. Amen. They don't want to come up for prayer. They're like, oh, no, 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 you don't know too much of what's going on. I don't want nobody to know that I'm going through. Jesus. I don't know if they got any free people in the house. I don't care. Amen. Uh, uh, no, what, what I know is that I'm going to get my freedom in the house. I'm not I'm going to create declares that I don't want to leave the same way that I came. Because right. if I came down, I want to leave up. If I came down, I want to come, I want to leave loose. Whatever it is, I know God has something for me at the altar. Yes, he Ooh, yes, he, he is does. setting yes, the captives free. Did you realize that there's healing at the altar? Yes. There is healing. That there's a, the balm of Gilead. The anointing of God flows at the altar. But if you sit there and miss your altar, you miss your healing. Amen. You're like, well, I'm sitting in the house. Sometimes it takes for you to be radical and to go to the altar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is quiet in the house tonight, but you must understand. God is speaking to us tonight. He's trying to tell you that it's important that you go to the altar. And the question is, and this is a question most people have, why, 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 is, it, why is it so difficult for people to, to, you know, like come into a building and come to an altar? Number one, they in pride. Amen. Number one, pride. Uh, half of the people won't get saved because they, they got to make a public display. Oh yeah, it's quiet, but Amen. you see, the Lord God says, whenever you get saved, it should be on public display. Make the devil mad. Make him upset. Just come forward. Don't just sit there. Even if you accept the prayer, the sinner's prayer, and accept them as your personal Lord and say, it's important for you to get up and acknowledge that, you know what, I publicly come forth and say, I am saved by grace. I'm saved by the precious blood of Jesus. It's important for you to answer the call for the altar. Amen. But see, that's one of the main things that, well, you know, pride will stop people from coming to the altar. 
A thing that people love that, that well, I should say that God loves about an altar, it humbles you. Mm -hmm. It makes you so humble. I don't care how, how much you got going on, I don't care how much, made, how much dollars you have in a bank account. But when you go to an altar, you know what you're doing? You're, you're, you're saying, Lord God, I got something only you can handle. And that's something. I don't know about you, but there's like about 20 of us in here tonight that only God can handle. Amen. I'm going to put my hand up in that one. I'm going to be one of the 20. There's something that only God can. I love you and I appreciate you, but there's only God can handle this here. And so I'm going to present it at the altar. I'm going to leave it there so, because I know that there's power in the altar. Uh, and, but see, I'm humbling myself to let you know that I have something that's going on. You know, many times I was known, and I'm saying that to remind myself and those who go, I was always crying. I, I was at one time deemed the weeping prophet because I was always crying. There was always issues going on in my life, and I was always crying about something. But what I did not know is that God was delivering me. Do you realize God was blessing me? He was taking care of the, taking off the old and giving me a fresh and a new. So I'm here to tell you, I'm saying this word to encourage somebody who keeps coming to the altar. And as many times they say, like, she's still a dog. You better keep coming to the altar because that, that breaking right there heals you, delivers you, and sets you free. It changes your attitude. It changes how you used to be. It takes you from the old and puts you in the new. Yes, Thank you, Lord. I didn't get too many hands up. Because God is talking to us today. There is a purpose that God has given you an altar. It is a place where there is sacrifice. Old Testament altars are not pretty. Do you realize in Old Testament they would bring pigeons, goats, and lambs, and they would sacrifice those things on the altar? But I, I must encourage you to know that today's altars are not pretty either. Because they may not be bringing a pigeon in, but somebody's bringing an addiction in. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. Somebody's bringing this, this sin in that they think, you know, the, the secret faults are coming in. Somebody's bringing an unsaved loved one to the altar. Somebody's bringing a, a broken marriage to the altar. Somebody's bringing a wayward child there. Somebody's bringing an illness that they cannot seem to, to, to just to get recovered from. That's all. Do you realize in the spirit realm how much that is at the altar? Do you realize the color? That's more than all the blood and all the pigeons that can be sacrificed because it's all on the altar. And the Lord God says, whenever you bring that to the altar, can you see the filth at the altar? You're like, oh, wait a minute, it's holy. But the Lord God said, well, see, we bring our mess, but God says, I do the work and I clean. You don't, you leave it here so you don't go back the way that you were. Amen. My God, somebody needs to see that in the spirit. Come on now, people of God. It's like you get a Holy Ghost shout. You come with all kind of, you come with all kind of stuff on you when you come to the altar. And when you're coming there, you're already humbled, you're already downtrodden. But the Lord God says, when you get here, I do the work in you. I clean, and you leave that here, and you go back refreshed, revived, and Amen. renewed. You don't have to deal with what you came in. The Lord God said, that's why I'm calling you the altar. Tell your neighbor, we got to bow down. Bow. Tell your neighbor another time, we got to bow down. Bow. Children of God, we've got to get there. The Lord God is calling for us to get to an altar. To get to our altar. Do you realize the altar is also a place of covenant? Mm -hmm. Come on now. It's a place where you have a common bond with the Father. It is a place where you can talk to God. You know what? God will talk to those who talk to Him. Right now. Yes, He does. <laughs> Come on, to get there. God will talk to those who talk to Him. And if you have built yourself an altar and said, you come to the altar, you know, whenever I say, when, when you, you need to understand the wording. And when we go, oh, yeah, we're going to open up the altar, especially early, because the Lord God says, I need to take care of some individuals. There's a 911 at the altar. So that's why it's going to open up. I'm trying to get you prepared because the Lord God is telling you right now that your altar, whenever he says, prepare your hearts. He means you need to still come up there talking like more. You know, it's not verbally, it's spiritual. Yes. Lord God, I got this going. Mm -hmm. You know, you shouldn't be worried about anything else. Amen. It's all right, dude. Let the babies be the babies. But you need to like, wait a minute, Lord, Lord, if you don't help me right now. You see, when I said prepare yourself for the altar and start work, that means you allow me get to start communicating and tell the Father the issues that you come up here with. See, in the spirit 
around what I see. I see luggage being dragged up to the I, I see all, all kind of issues being dragged. See, I don't just see you coming up and, you know, barely lifting up your hands because some of you are so heavy weighted, you can barely pick up your arms. But you should see that thing in the spirit. The Lord God said, see, there, it's hard for them because it's so much weight that's on them. But he said, that's why I'm ushering them to the altar. Amen. He said, people of God, you've got to find your place at the altar so he can set you free tonight. Is a place where freedom takes place. Amen. Come on now. He said, I'm telling you that whenever you make a covenant with God and you make that conversation with him, you make that bond and say, Lord God, there's suffering on my altar. There's sacrifices on my altar. See, a lot of us, you may not realize it, but we're going through something. And it's a sacrifice. It's, it's not an easy place to be. Uh, you know, living this Christian life is not an easy thing to do. I don't know whoever told you that it was going to be glorious, but I'm here to tell you, it's not an easy thing to do. It's hard to be quiet when you want to say something. It's hard to, you know, when God tells you to speak and all of a sudden you're like, Lord God, I don't want to, I don't want to offend, but thus said the Lord. You know, it's hard whenever you're operating in this world, when you're working with individuals or operating with individuals that don't believe in your God and don't believe in your teeth and think more or less that you're foolish for going yes. to a church and then going to an altar and praying to a God that you can't see. Oh, come on now. Come on here. But that's exactly what I hear every day. It's that, you know, how can you go to a place and then be there and fellowship and believe that God is there. I want you to know, every time I step into the house, every time I come to the the Lord meets me right there. Amen. You're like, well, wait a minute. Why? Because I expect him. I prepare my heart. I'm expecting God to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Yes, he Lord. said the foolish things in the world can form the wise. See, it's foolish to come on a Wednesday night. It's foolish to come in the natural, to come and sit and hear a word in the Bible about to have somebody preach it, and then you lay it down at the altar. See, it's foolish to man, but God said the foolish things of the world come from the wife. But yet, whenever you come, you're going to leave set free tonight. Amen. I don't know about you, but somebody's about to get their freedom tonight in the name of Jesus. Why? Because they, they took a step and said, I'm going to the altar today. I'm going to leave everything at the altar. I'm going to leave every problem, every worry at the altar tonight. Every matter that I'm going through, I'm going to leave it at the altar. I know that I mentioned to you that the altar is a place of offering and sacrifice. But tonight, the Lord God is telling us about the altar is that we must leave our cares at the altar. Literally, bring your issue, bring it to the altar. Bring it before the Lord God, the one who can do something for you. I, I, I did tell you about Psalms uh, 43. Amen. Psalms 43. My God. Psalms 43 and 4. But Psalms 43 is a verse, is a, a whole psalm that you need to know. I'm looking at verse number 4. Look at verse number 4. Then I will go to the altar of God. To God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O oh, oh God, my God. You must understand that in this psalm that David is going through something. He's going through a time of being accused. Have you ever been accused before? Mm -hmm. Wrongly accused? Yes. And you've been asking the Lord God, you know what, to vindicate me. That means, you know what, state that I'm clear of this wrong, oh God. You know, I want to say I'm right, but you know what, Lord God, he's trying to say, hold your peace. I'm about to clear it, clear up the accusation. I'm about to clear your name. That's what vindicate me. Vindicate me, oh God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Lord, have mercy. That means the things that were coming up up against you, the Lord God said, he's about to clean your name up. Yes. I'm here to tell, I don't know about you, but I'm going to receive that in the name of Jesus. Because whatever you're going through tonight, the Lord God said, when you bring it to the altar, I'm about to vindicate you in the name of Jesus. I'm about to plead your cause. And you're going to be free from that thing in the name of Jesus. And he's going to deliver you from, from undeceitful and unjust individuals. Amen. I told you my help was coming. You see, Psalm 43, that, that, that right there, you can just lay down in it because whenever God says he's about to vindicate you, do you realize that? Then I will go to the altar of God. See, he's going to right your wrong. 
He's going to correct. He's going to answer on your behalf. But he said, that's not going to be done unless you come to the altar. Come on, baby. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I told you, people of God, that not only is the church altar, but you need to make an altar in your home. You need to have a place where you go. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Sometimes an altar can be in your vehicle. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Listen, you know, the devil's right, you know, acting foolish. But well, they ain't got no place. The house is small. The devil is alive. I tell you what, I'll find a place in my car. Nobody going to sit in that seat right there. That's the Lord's seat. When I ride in my car, the Bible sits there. You got to listen to the back, baby. Because right there, the Lord sits right there. Whenever I need to pray, I got to get away from all those things. I go sit in my vehicle, and me and the Lord, we are pressing that thing down right there. I get in my altar. I find peace. I find restoration. I get revived, refreshed, renewed. Then I can go back and do what I need to go do. The enemy would like to limit you. And that's the best thing. That's the good thing about the New Testament altar. Because see, the Old Testament altar, there's only considered one particular type of way. But the New Testament altar, the Lord God says, I'm everywhere at all times. Yes. See, you can go in your vehicle. You can make a corner. Many a time, I did a whole year praying in the corner. It wasn't up at, probably less space than in that corner right there. I mean, it tell you, but I put my nose in that corner. And yes, it was humiliating. Yes, it was. But God did some great things in that with my nose in the corner. Right. I'm going to tell you, I got some deliberate ministry started. Uh, yeah, there was some season in my life when I was able to do great things for God. And I don't know how I did it. All because my nose was in the corner. I was bringing it to the altar. I'm giving someone a word of encouragement. The Lord got you. There's something that you desire to do for God. Bring it to the altar. You need to bring it to the altar. He's going to give you the strength to do it. He's going to give you information, confirmation, and give you revelation and clarity. All of it. But you're going to bring it to the altar. That's right. And see, you're going to find the power and the strength that you need at the altar. Amen. My God, every time that you get there, I want you to know that my healing took place at, at an altar. You're like, well, what kind of the altar in my home? I remember it on a silly little teddy bear blanket. That was my altar. And you're like, wait a minute. Because see, I don't always have kids around, it seems like. And you know what? So it blesses me. But it seems so strange that I got my healing that flowed through my flew through this arm all the way straight across this chest. And when I got the results, there was nothing there. It flowed at my altar on the floor on a blanket that had a big old teddy bear on it. Uh -huh. wow. I, didn't know. I, didn't know. I never heard. But see, I consecrated that place. And I even now, I consecrate. I mean, the test is the foolish things about to come for the why. You see, some of you, you're not taking me serious, but God said, you better build an altar. He said, if you don't have it, you can get you a good white towel. Throw that towel out there, get in a place, pray and consecrate. Don't let anybody go when you lay that towel. Amen. And every time you got an issue, get on that towel and cry out unto the Lord God. I guarantee you, you talk to him, he will talk to you. Amen. You have brought your things to an altar. Do you write God? He, he admonishes an altar. He watches an altar. He appreciates an altar because he knows it was a sacrifice. There is power at an altar. Amen. There is healing at an altar. Lord have mercy. I can get you to understand so much in the name of you how important an altar is for you to bow down at an altar. Do you realize whenever you develop an altar in your home, that people have a tendency to always want to want you to pray for them. And it's nine times out of ten that someone close to your altar. You ever know that notice that? Like if you develop an altar somewhere, now they don't know it's your altar, and they just kind of see some things there, but they're not really sure of it, and they just say it's somebody just visiting. I guarantee you they slip themselves right in that altar. They're just standing there, and you're like, boy, they get any close on my house with a you know? But do you realize that they're drawn to deliverance power, that they don't even understand it themselves? I'm saying that, I know it may seem like a blessing, you're giving a lot of personal testimony. I'm saying that for you to understand. It was so simple, but God allowed me to, to build an altar, a chair, a blanket. And then God says he utilized that as an altar. See, some of you, your, the enemy stopped you thinking that I don't have the time, I don't have the place, I can't concert. Yes, you can. You have the opportunity. You can take a tissue or not. Whatever you have, consecrate it. Bring your work and build you an altar. 
God says that he's going he's to meet you there at the altar. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to learn how to bring your things to the altar. Bring that situation. I told you I'm about to open up the altar a little bit earlier tonight because I want you to understand.